Uh, I'm Mihail Novikov. I'm actually too from Reindex, like Willem. I'm going to talk about something less about Reindex. Um, so GraphQL is the new cool. Everyone's talking about GraphQL. So um, and GraphQL is awesome. Uh, it's um, it's like uh, an amazing way to to build the APIs that are very good, very good and suited for your product. But Chen um, uh, Lo had this good point that all the tools we do are on different levels of abstraction. And GraphQL, it's on API level of abstraction. GraphQL is a tool to build your API. So all the stuff that's built in the GraphQL is focused on actually building the APIs. So um, why is this a problem? Or why is this not a problem? So uh, imagine a really simple schema for to-do missing application. We have a user, we have a to-do, and user to-do are connected. And uh, practically, you know, um, when you use something like Django or Ruby on Rails, you could you could do define something like this in code, and you get an API. You get like your, your you get your data model, you get your data storage. But uh, if you actually want to implement a practical GraphQL API, you also need lots of more stuff. Um, for example, if you want to add relay support to GraphQL, you need two more types at least at first. And because you know relay doesn't use lists to indicate presented data, but uses connections. And then uh, if you want to do mutations, you need more types, uh, lots of types, and it's lots of work. And I'm just showing the declarative version, like you know the introspection kind of version of, of the types. But in practice, you also need to write result functions, you need to write implementations, you need to, you need to do lots of work. And it's fine. It's fine if you are writing a custom API, but often you just want to get a GraphQL API and get, get running fast. You just want to have your like, semantic types, the types that actually you want to store in the database set up. And um, I would want to have this kind of um, definition and have a GraphQL API for me. And um, because this is a higher level definition, uh, here we like know GraphQL like the the server knows that those those definitions are actually semantic types that you connect together because for for GraphQL all the types are the same they're all objects they're all nodes so it doesn't know that connection is special service type it doesn't know that your input is special input type it just knows that there are types in your API and this is a problem because uh, you kind of you kind of lose this understanding of the types because of this. But if you just like you know focus on those types, then this suddenly becomes much more interchangeable. Because you if you have a set way to connect those types, then uh, you have a set way to like share your schema. So what I'm what I'm proposing that, that we need like high level language that only focuses on semantic types, and we generate all the service types, we generate all the, like mutations, all the connections that you need to actually use GraphQL and to have a usable GraphQL API. And this way, we'll preserve the type metadata by only using the semantic level types. And suddenly, we can start sharing our schemas. Because currently, one of the problems with GraphQL is it's really hard to, for example, if I write a GraphQL server for, I don't know, Google or Twitter ABI, I can't really share it with other people because the GraphQL schemas are not portable, exactly because there is no higher level metadata about what are the types that are like uh, actual like, semantic types. But if we have those higher level types, the schema becomes interchangeable because I can say, I want to connect to the, to like, you know, Twitter tweet from my user and, uh, this tweet uh, is a higher level type, but, but it, it, because, it, because it's higher level type, I can generate the connections, I can generate the mutations, and I can connect together with relay mechanics, but I don't need to write it myself. Um, and we actually do this at Reindex. And um, we do it at Reindex locally with a schema, we create them, we just, just have declarative types, we generate the API, and we have to unmap the storage, and um, yeah, drum roll. Uh, like we have this framework behind the scene that we built to to have reindex, and uh, we are going to open source it. We are going to release it to open source so everyone can build like higher level, um, like uh, uh, easier like higher level servers with GraphQL. And uh, reindex already is like full featured GraphQL server. We store data, and you will be able to connect to other APIs and build like GraphQL, GraphQL servers. <laughs> and um, if we, if we have those higher level types, if we have this higher level and reindex is like first step for our community, imagine that like, you know, if we can start having GraphQL schemas that are shareable for public API, so you can include Twitter API to your application just by, you know, importing it, just by installing an NPM package. What if you have your legacy API and you build like a, a schema around this legacy API and then you can include the application. And uh, you can also, um, you know, add in some database and connect it all together. And it will be all together in one GraphQL API. So, yeah, thank you.